Okay, so first for assignment number 30, I need to give you guys the formulas. So I'll just zoom in over here. So I got some blank empty space and I'll write them down. Okay, so the first formula is the sum of cosines. So we have cosine alpha, this is the alpha, it's not A, okay, it's alpha plus beta. That's not a B, that's beta. Alpha and beta are Greek letters. Yeah, Greek letters. So cosine alpha plus beta would be equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha cosine beta. I'll give you guys some time to write that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I wrote that wrong. <laughs> this part, not a cosine. This is a sine. I was like, something looks off about the thing I just wrote. This should be a sine. So cosine, cosine minus sine, sine. Okay. And let me fix the attendance. Give me a moment. Okay. So those, that's the cosine adding. What if we have cosine subtracting? So here's cosine alpha minus beta. Okay, and then it's pretty similar. It's just going to be cosine alpha, cosine beta. Instead of a minus, it's gonna be flipped to a plus and then um, sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, so I'll give you guys some time to write that one also. Those are for cosines when you add or subtract. I'll draw a line here as we do our signs. All right, those are the cosines. Let's write out for sine now. So we have sine of alpha plus beta. And that's going to be equal to sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. I can give you guys some time to write that one. Okay, and then finally for when we have a subtracted and sine, so sine alpha minus beta, that's going to be sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. Okay, so here are our four formulas. Okay, I wanna pause the recording to double check that everybody's done writing them. And then let's click and see the angle and some difference. All right, so let me write or screenshot that. For positive acute angles A and B, it is known that sine of A is 35 over 37 and cosine B is um, five over 13. Find the value of cosine A plus B in simplest form. So let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. So if cosine A plus B, let's write out the formula. So cosine A plus B would be equal to cosine A, cosine B minus sine A, sine B, right? I'm just writing out the formula that we wrote in the first screenshot, except now it's with A's and B's instead of alphas and betas. So here's just the formula. We already know cosine B, that's right here. We already know the sine A, that's this one. 
but we need to now know cosine A and also we need to know sine of B. So for those, we're just gonna draw triangles so that we can figure it out. Let's first figure out, um, let's figure out sine of B. So I'm just gonna draw a right triangle right over here. Here's a right triangle. And I'm just gonna label this one, this angle as A. Okay, so sine is according to so ka toa, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, the OH, opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is 35 and the hypotenuse is 37, right? Because sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I've labeled 35 and 37 on this triangle. Are there any questions up till here? Because I know uh, we did this kind of a long time ago. We had like a whole week of break. If you have a question, please type yes in the chat. Okay, so to figure out this third side, we're going to need to use um, the Pythagorean theorem. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm gonna just use the space a squared plus b squared is 35 equals c squared, so that's 37. Okay, and then with the calculator, you can figure out what the 35 squared and the 37 squared are. So we have a squared plus 35 times 35 is 1, 2, 2, 5. And then 37 times 37 is 1, 3, 6, 9. Then you can subtract the 1, 2, 2, 5. a squared is equal to 144. Then you square root everything because you don't want a squared, you want a. So then a is equal to 12. So I'm gonna label that 12. Any questions on the Pythagorean theorem part? Okay. So I'm gonna use a different color just to write it out, but that just helps us find our cosine of A. So let me write it out here. Cosine of A is going to be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent will be the 12 over the hypotenuse will still be the 37. So now we know cosine of A. So we have sine A and we have cosine A now. So we're good. Uh, uh, we're good with the A angle. We're going to essentially do the same process for the B angle. So they told us cosine of B, which was over here, is 5 over 13. So we are going to need to draw a second right triangle over here. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. No, I'll zoom in later. Give you guys some time to write. So we draw another right triangle over here. I'm just going to call this angle B. And cosine, according to Sokotoa, is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to label the 5 and the 13, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side, based on my angle B. Now to find the other side, the last side, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem again. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we have... 5 squared plus b squared equals 13 squared, according to the Pythagorean theorem. And then we're going to simplify this and solve for b. So 5 squared is 25. And then 13 squared is 169. Then you can subtract 25. And you get that b squared is equal to 144 square roots because we want b, which gives us 12. So then I label that in onto the triangle. Before I go on, are there any questions? Okay. So we've labeled all three sides of this triangle. Now our goal here was to find sine of a because we have cosine, wait, sorry, not a, sine of b 
because they gave us cosine of b, so now we want to use sine of b. So let's write it out. Sine of b is equal to, according to Sogatoa, is going to be the opposite over hypotenuse. So we have the opposite, I can't talk, opposite, and we have the hypotenuse. So now we have all four components of our equation. So let's put it all together. They want cosine A. So that was this one. Okay, so we have 12 over 37. I'll just put in parentheses. Um, multiplied by cosine B. Cosine B was just given to us right over here. So that's 5 over 13. Minus sine of A. That one was also just given to us right over here, 35 over 37. And sine of B, which is the red one that we solved for. So that's 12 over 13. Okay, so we have fractions multiplied together and then we subtract them. So when you multiply fractions together, I don't know the last time we did this, but um, you just multiply it straight across. So for this first one, I'll write it on the bottom here. We multiply across the top, so 12 times 5. So 12 times 5, I believe that's 60. Yeah. And then on the bottom, 37 times 13. That's 481. You can just use a calculator for this. Then on the next set over here, same thing, multiply straight across. On the top, we have 35 times 12, which gives us 420. And then on the bottom, we have 37 times 13 again, which is still 481. Okay, so we have 60 over 481 minus 420 over 481. So when you have two fractions being added or subtracted, you can make sure, first of all, that they have the same denominator. So they both have 481. That's good. The 481 stays the same. On the top, you just simply do 60 minus 420. And I got negative 360. OK. So this is our answer, but we have to simplify it because they want it in simplest form. So you have to think to yourself, what is the greatest common factor that fits into both of these? If you don't know the greatest common factor, just what is a factor <laughs> that fits into both of these? So we can, um, let's see, we have, is this simplifiable? I, I don't think so. 481 is a pretty weird number because 37 and 13, I believe are both prime. All right. I don't think this is simplifiable. We can test it out and see if it is. So I'm going to type negative 360 over 481 into Delta Math. But before I do, are there any questions? And I'm going to pause the video to give you guys some time to ponder that. All right, let's go type it in. Negative 360 over 481. All right, cool. Okay, so that was the first problem. Um, let's do maybe another two examples. This is the only category for today's homework. There's just 10 problems of this, okay? So cool, now we have a sine A plus B. So for positive acute angles A and B, it is known that cosine of A is 24 over 25 and sine B is 11 over 61. Find the value of sine A plus B in smallest form. So let's write out the sine A plus B formula. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so it's a little bigger. Sine A plus B is going to be sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine b. So it's a good idea to have these formulas written and just handy so you can stare at them because it's a lot to memorize, right? Okay, so just double checking that that is the formula, sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b, yep. All right, let's see. We already have cosine a, that's this one, and we have sine b, 
that's this one. But we still need sine A and cosine B, as you can see um, right here. We don't have those yet. So let's figure it out. Let's first deal with the A angle. So over here, we're just going to draw a triangle, right triangle. This is our angle A. All right, cosine according to so -ka Toa, according to Sokotoa, cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to label the adjacent as 24 and the hypotenuse as 25. Then we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the third side. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's solve it out. We have 24 squared plus b squared equals 25 squared. And then, what is 24 times 24? 576 plus b squared equals, what is 25 times 25? 625, subtract the 576. You get b squared is equal to 49 square root, square root. You get b is equal to 7. Pausing here, are there any questions? Okay, so now we um, labeled our triangle. We want sine A because we are given cosine A. Now let's find sine A. So according to Sokotoa, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. So let me just write this out in a different color. Sine of A is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So seven over 25, we'll keep that in mind. Now we're going to essentially do the exact same process to find cosine b, given our sine b over on this, this area. Draw out your triangle. Label your angle b. And start labeling. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I label the opposite 11, and I label the hypotenuse 61. So then we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we have to solve for our missing side. So a squared plus 11 squared equals 61 squared. So that means a squared plus, that's not a plus sign. <laughs> a squared plus 121 equals, what is 61 squared? Let's see, 61 times 61, 371. Okay, and then you're going to subtract 121. You get a squared is equal to 3,600. And then you're going to square root, square root, and you'll get a is equal to 60. So our third side is 60. Pausing here, are there any questions? Let's write out our cosine B. So they gave us sine B, now we want cosine B. So cosine B is equal to, according to Sokotoa, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have our adjacent, which is 60, over the hypotenuse, which is 61. And now we have the four components that we need. Okay, so writing them out, we have oops, is equal to, Sine A comes first. Sine A, we said, was over here. So that's 7 over 25. Um, cosine B, that's the one we solved for over here in red. That's going to be 60 over 61. And then to that, we're going to add cosine A, which they gave us, which was 24 over 25. And sine B, which they gave us over here, which was 11 over 61. So we just plugged it in, and then now we just have to multiply and add. So remember, when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So for this first one, I'm just going to zoom out so I have more empty space to write. <laughs> 7 and 60 on the top, so you want to multiply 7 times 60 on the top. You get another 420. They just love giving us that number, don't they? And then on the bottom, you have 25 times 61. And you get 1,525. To that, you are going to add the next pair of fractions multiplied, and you're going to multiply them straight across again 
on the top you have 24 and 11 so you multiply 24 times 11 you get 264 on the bottom you have 25 times 61 again it's still going to be 1525 now when you're adding two fractions you double check are the denominators the same yes they are in these cases they're always going to be the same because that's always going to be the hypotenuse of both triangles multiplied. So that bottom stays the same. And the top, you just add it straight across. So 420 plus 264 gives us 684. OK. And then from here, you just have to take a look and see if you can simplify it. I'm pretty sure some calculators have a simplifying button, but in our case, um, I'm just looking at the denominator. 1525 is 25 times 61. 61 is a prime number, I think. So I don't believe this is simplifiable. So I'm going to test it out. On delta math and if it tells me I need to simplify then we're going to simplify it but for now I'm going to try 684 over 1525 before I type it in are there any questions 684 over 1525 684 over 1525 okay so at this point I think some of you because like I didn't get any questions. So I think some of you are ready to be working on this on your own. So feel free to ignore me as I continue giving more examples for those who need it. So if you want to work on it on your own, go for it. If you want more examples, I'm still giving them. I wanna see if I can find a subtraction um, problem because we've done a sine addition and a cosine addition. It would be nice if I find you guys a subtraction. So there you go. We're gonna do this one as our Last example for now. Okay, for positive acute angles A and B is known that sine of A is 21 over 29, cosine B is 9 over 41. Find the value of sine A minus B in this form. So let's write out our um, formula. So for the sine subtracted, it's going to be equal to sine A cosine B minus cosine A, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my handwriting, sine B. I'm just going to blame it on the fact that I'm very tired. <laughs> so sine A, cosine B, minus cosine A, sine B. That's the formula we wrote down in the very beginning. Okay, so let's see. They gave us sine A, that's done. They gave us cosine B, that's done. We still need cosine A and sine B, so we're gonna figure that out. Let's deal with the A first. I'm gonna draw a triangle, a very wiggly triangle. This is my A. According to so ka toa sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. That's what the O and the H stand for, opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to label the opposite 21 and the hypotenuse 29. And then we're going to need to figure out our missing side. So I'm just going to call that A, B, C. Remember, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's write it out. A squared plus 21 squared equals 29 squared. So A squared plus, and then let's see. 21 times 21 is 441. Oh, that's interesting. 21 squared is the reverse of 12 squared. <laughs> okay, and then 29 times 29, 841. Then you subtract 441. You get A squared is equal to 400. And then you square root, square root, and where do I have space? A is equal to 20. <laughs> there we go. So we have our triangle labeled, and we wanted cosine A. That's what it said over here. So if we want cosine A, we're going to do the adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent. Is 20 
over the hypotenuse is 29. So now we got our cosine A. Last but not least, we need to find sine B. That's the last component of our um, equation that we're missing. So to do that, I'm gonna draw a triangle for this B angle over here. And this is B. We have um, cosine B is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is nine and the hypotenuse is 41. Once again, we're gonna use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So nine squared plus B squared equals 41 squared. So 81 plus B squared equals, I don't know what that is. So 41 times 41, one, six, eight, one. Then you're gonna minus 81, minus 81. You get B squared is equal to one, six, zero, zero. And then, wait, did I write that wrong? 41 squared? Oh yeah, no, it's fine. And then you're gonna square root. And you get 40. So now our triangle's labeled. Now that our triangle's labeled, we wanted what? We wanted sine of B. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're gonna use the opposite over the hypotenuse. So 40 over 41. Okay, now that we have all four components, let's put it together. We have Sine of A, that was given to us over here, 21 over 29. Cosine B, that was given to us over here also, 9 over 41. Did I write that right? Yes, okay. Minus cosine A was the thing we solved for in blue, so 20 over 29. And then sine of B was the thing we solved for in red, so 40 over 41. multiplying them out together straight across 21 times 9 on the first fraction 21 times 9 189 over 29 times 41 1189 oh what a coincidence <laughs> and then for the second one 20 times 40 that gives us 800 over 29 times 41 is still 1189. So now that we have um, two fractions with the same denominator being subtracted, you're going to keep the denominator. So 1189 stays. And then on the top, you do 189 minus 800. And you get negative 611. So this will be our answer. Of course, you have to think to yourself, is this simplifiable? But look at our denominators. We got 29 and 41 as our denominators. Those are both prime numbers. So if our denominator is prime times prime, there's a very low chance of this being simplifiable. So I'm going to go enter in negative 611 over 1189. But before I do, are there any questions? Let's go enter this in. I think I entered that right, negative 611 over 1189. Okay, cool. So we just did three examples of these and I've received zero questions, which I hope means that you guys are understanding it. But if that's not the case, please do call me over when we're in our breakout rooms. But I'm gonna go end this recording.